Current Big Ten member Michigan and future Big Ten member Washington will meet on Monday night in Houston, Texas to determine this season's college football playoff national champion. Is the result of this year's postseason within college football the beginning of the shift of the narrative as it pertains to the Big Ten Conference? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Make absolutely no mistake, Michigan's victory in the Rose Bowl and Washington's victory in the Sugar Bowl are very big deals. These are stepping stones to greater success. These are stepping stones to the changing of the narrative that exists around the Big Ten. A narrative that says Big Ten teams can't win the big one. Big Ten teams can't compete on a national championship type of level consistently like the SEC can. Notice how I said stepping stones. Just because Michigan and Washington are facing off in the heart of SEC country in Houston, Texas, doesn't mean that we've skipped to the end of the line in terms of changing the narrative. It doesn't even mean that we've advanced a couple of chapters, right? It doesn't mean that we've jumped from chapter two to chapter six. It's more of a chapter two to a chapter three or four type of situation. This is just one step in the journey because it is all about consistency. Look at the success that the SEC has had over the last two decades. They have been a mainstay in BCS and college football playoff championship games. And for the Big Ten to maybe be on that level or expect to be on that level from everybody nationally, they need to do it on a more consistent basis. But this is a big deal. For Michigan and Washington to both be in this situation, it's especially a big deal when you take the best that the Big Ten has to offer in the Michigan Wolverines and you take the best that the SEC has to offer in the Alabama Crimson Tide and it was the Michigan Wolverines, the representative from the Big Ten Conference, that was the better team. To really illustrate my point as it pertains to the SEC and the Big Ten, especially over the span of the last 10 years, within the four-team college football playoff era, you got to take about talk about the opportunities that have been there to compete in a CFP national championship game, right? Before this season, right, from 2014 to 2023, there have been 18 opportunities to play in the CFP national championship game. The Big Ten has only played in two of those opportunities. Ohio State in the inaugural one in 2014 where they beat Oregon. Hey, there's another current and future uh, Big Ten scenario there in 2014, uh, which they won. And then, of course, they lost in the COVID year in 2020 when Justin Fields was the quarterback of the Buckeyes. So two times of 18 opportunities for the Big Ten getting into that national championship game. The SEC, 10 times. They had gotten there with three teams, Alabama, Georgia, and LSU. So at this type of level, at the very top of the sport, this is great for the Big Ten in a one-year vacuum. But to really, I think, get it to where the Big Ten wants to be, to realize the full potential that this conference has, they need to do it on a more consistent basis. Right, I mentioned 10 times for the SEC, two times for the Big Ten. Okay, in the next 10 years span in the college football playoff, you need to get that closer to 5-5, five and five, to 6-4, and four, to, to something like that where it's more in the middle instead of spread far apart. I think that's why we have the narrative that we do today. You have to hand it to the SEC. Over the span of time, they have won these matchups. They have gotten into these championship situations and they have come out on top. And the cold hard truth is that the Big Ten has not been able to do that. I said it a month ago, weeks ago on this channel, and I kept on repeating it. And New Year's Day was kind of the fruits of my labor, so to speak. Okay? If the Big Ten wants to change that narrative and they want to consistently be in that 
elite national championship conversation year in and year out at the beginning of every season. They need to win some of these games. They need to beat some of these Southeastern Conference teams. And that's exactly what happened on New Year's Day. So it is a step in the right direction for the Big Ten, but there is still a long ways to go. The Big Ten has to prove that this was not a fluke. They have to prove that this was not just a one-year wonder. All right? Because look back last year at TCU. Just because TCU beat Michigan in a college football playoff semifinal does not mean that the Horned Frogs or the Big 12 are going to be in this situation year after year after year because it's just not true. They're just, it's just not going to happen because the Big 12 don't have the brands, they don't have the programs, they don't have the recruiting prowess, and they don't have the resources to compete at this type of level like the Big 10 does. I think the Big Ten now is going to expect to be in these types of national championship conversations year in and year out. And they have the brands, they have the programs to have those expectations each and every single year. Now, going forward, success head-to-head in the 12-team college football playoff is going to be needed. It's going to be adamant for the Big Ten for this thing not to just go right back to where it was. Not only in the 12-team playoff, in those games that absolutely matter, the biggest games of the year in December and into January, but when they meet head-to-head in some of these bigger non-conference games. Because we're kicking off 2024, right? 2023 is going to finish extremely strong for the Big Ten Conference. But 2024 presents a lot of golden opportunities for the Big Ten to say, yeah, last year was great, but it was no fluke. We're here to stay. Because you got three big Big Ten versus SEC matchups early in the season. You've got USC against LSU on Labor Day Sunday at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. You've got Michigan playing Texas. You've got Wisconsin playing Alabama. So if the Big Ten just comes out next year and they lose all three of those games, we could get things nationally going back down the SEC train tracks. You and I know that even if the Big Ten goes 0-3 in those games, that doesn't determine anything. There's still a lot of season at that point in front of both these Big Ten teams and in front of these SEC teams as well. But you need to keep on making progress. You can't let 2023 go in vain, so to speak. Now, Of course, they did it in college football playoff games, but I think as a whole, this postseason is also a mark of progress for the Big Ten Conference because they did it on the larger landscape in terms of bowl games. Three and four record for the Big Ten versus the SEC. Now, this is kind of why I say stepping stone because if you take away those two playoff games, which I know that's a big If, okay, those are two big games, the two biggest games of the year, a current Big Ten team and a future Big Ten team came out on top. So that's a big deal. I just want to say that first. But if you do take those out, the Big Ten was one and four outside of the playoff when they played head to head with that only win, Maryland beating Auburn. LSU defeating Wisconsin, that was a really tough one to swallow. Ole Miss defeating Penn State, Tennessee defeating Iowa, Iowa, you need to score some points, man. Like, come on. You need to get that together um, for, for next season. And the bowl records indicate, and now I know bowls are kind of very tough to judge. I will be willing to admit that because of transfer portal stuff, because of opt-outs. It's not a completely 100% accurate metric to kind of judge, But I think a lot of these teams are dealing with transfers. A lot of these teams are dealing with opt-outs. So for the Big Ten to be successful from a broad point, not just talking about Big Ten versus SEC matchups, for the Big Ten to be successful as they were maybe compared to the SEC, I think that really speaks to the progress that this conference is maybe making and maybe putting dense in the armor, but there may be dense. We've got a long way to go 
before we chop off pieces of the armor, uh, so to speak, throughout all of this. It, ca it can't stop here. I think that's the point I'm trying to make. That we need to continue to really progress through. And I think for the future of the Big Ten, to prove that this was not, to make sure that this season was not a fluke, I think it also depends on some of these bigger brands really stepping up. That might be a little bit down right now. I'm looking at you, USC. All right, because if we get the USC and we get the Lincoln Riley that we know that they should be able to be, a nine-win team, a 10-win team, something like that. If Nebraska, now with Dylan Raiola and their future, can take a step up, okay, because they have all of the resources in the world, the Cornhuskers do, to be successful. That is another big part of this for the Big Ten to continue to step up and be successful. But, folks, this is the first step. Okay, there has been a lot of angst over the years and Big Ten fans maybe pulling their hair out, not being able to win on the field. But this was the first step to win some of these games, these bigger playoff, biggest games of the year. And now to have the Big Ten on display on ESPN. To have the Big Ten on display in this type of atmosphere is a big deal. It is a big stepping stone going forward for this conference. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.